QuickBooks Online 2024 Payroll Setup. Get ready and some coffee because we're off to a quick start with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. We've been laying down those foundational items, those things necessary to be laid down before you can go through the normal cyclical accounting process. Most of those foundational items housed under the COG dropdown, under the Your Company section, we've looked at the account and settings. We've managed the users. We've taken a look at some of the lists, the primary lists being the chart of accounts and the products and services that we would be selling. We've also looked at the people we'll be doing business with, such as the customers and the vendors. And now we wanna be taking a look at the payroll items. So payroll, if you're running payroll within the system, would be one of those foundational things we wanna get right from the start. So just note that before we started this, we had our plan of, we set up our new accounting system in our current QuickBooks file, but we had some prior accounting system we're imagining in our practice problem. We took the ending balances from the last point of our prior system as of the cutoff date 12-31-23 entered them into our current system as of January 1st uh, 2024 and then going forward we will be using the current system note that we didn't have any payroll items in our first numbers here in practice if you're on an accrual system you might be dealing with some of the payroll items you might have some payroll uh, liabilities that you'd have to be uh, putting into the system. So, but note that payroll is a specialty field in and of itself. We have a whole nother course and section on payroll. We just want to go over the generalities uh, of it as we work through our practice problem in this uh, comprehensive practice problem. So a quick recap on the payroll before we, uh, before we go through the setup process. Note that there's multiple ways you can deal with payroll. You could deal with payroll internally turning it on in QuickBooks or possibly you could deal with payroll by uh, hiring a third-party payroll provider the big ones being like a Paychex or an ADP I'm not affiliated with them or advertising for them I'm just saying those are some of the larger ones and either way you're going to have to pay for it typically because it's going to be an upsell to purchase it within QuickBooks or you pay a third party to handle uh, the parts of the payroll on uh, outside of QuickBooks in the third party software. Also note, if you don't have any employees and you need to pick up more, more people, you're growing, then you have some options on how to grow, how to bring in staff for people to work for you. The three main options are, one, you hire them as an employee, two, possibly you can hire them as a contractor, and three, maybe you can bring them in as a partner. So just to get an idea of those three things, if you bring them in as some kind of partner or you give them an equity interest, then of course you have to deal with the issue of now they have a say in what you're gonna be doing in the business and they could also cost you liability. So that's so you have that's a big thing. So you have to make sure that you're, you're partnering up with people that uh, you have a common goal with and you set down the, 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 the rules that everybody everybody knows what to expect, which is a difficult thing to lay down and maintain sometimes. And then if, if you, between a contractor or an employee, uh, note that the IRS tries to make those things as if there's a, a, a really defined line between them. But in practice, there's a lot of gray area. So if you want 
control over someone to do day-to-day -day tasks and they're in the office, for example, and you're telling them what to do every step along the way, then it's pretty clear they're going to be an employee from the IRS's standpoint. But if, they're, if you're giving them a job and they use their own tools and they're more independent, then it's possible you can hire them as a contractor. If you hire them as a contractor, then the whole process of dealing with the internal issues of payroll and withholdings should be much easier if you hire them as an employee then of course you have to do you have to deal with the whole withholding and payroll scenario that's just a a quick recap of the of the payroll also if you're a bookkeeper note that payroll is a specialty area so do you want to be someone that specializes in quickbooks running payroll through the system or possibly you could set up a system where you work with a good third-party payroll provider and a CPA firm so that you can just do the bookkeeping and try to automate it with the bank feeds and increase the number of clients possibly you have that way by being more efficient and then working with the third-party payroll person and the CPA firm to make the adjustments necessary for year-end preparations such as tax returns. All right, so that's a general overview. Let's open up our reports down here and we'll start to do this every time. So in our reports, I'm gonna right click and open up the balance sheet and then right click and open up the profit and loss now that we have some numbers in here. So if I go on over to the balance sheet, uh, this is what we have entered last time. Let's put the date as of uh, 12, 31, 2, 3. Uh, I'm sorry, let's go from 010123 to 12, 31, 2, 3. Run it. And then the profit and loss tabbing to the right, closing the hand boogie, going from 010123 tab, 123123 tab, run it. Okay, quick recap on the payroll if we're processing it within our system. I'm going to use a flow chart. This is the QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but we're just using the flow to see how the payroll works. If you're dealing with payroll, here's the flow. You're typically going to have time to enter. If they're hourly employees, then you have to enter time to process the payroll, but you might not do it in QuickBooks. You might simply give them a timesheet and then basically just do it that way. So you enter the time as you do the payroll. The timesheet here that they enter, uh, might you might use that for a job cost system, which might be used in construction or a bookkeeping firm or CPA firm or law firm so that you can invoice based on the time. So this might not necessarily be strictly a payroll item and then you're going to pay people now you're going to choose what your pay periods will be meaning you have some leeway there the irs hasn't totally the government hasn't totally tied your hands together you could still choose to pay them for example uh weekly bi-weekly semi-weekly or semi-monthly and monthly those are the typical kind of pay periods that means you're going to process a check or electronic payment on whatever pay period that you select and so when you process the check, it's actually a fairly complex transaction because you're going to have to at least do federal income tax withholdings in the United States, Social Security, Medicare, federal income tax for the employees. By the way, note that taxes are things that change from place to place. So if you're in another country or in the United States, different states will also have different taxes. The double entry accounting system will be the same because it is what it is taxes because they're related to laws are going to change and for bookkeeping the payroll the you know taxes are the biggest laws that have an impact directly on the bookkeeping right so then so then you're going to withhold that you also might withhold benefits health insurance uh their voluntary withholdings and then the state stuff will be different than the federal thing in the united states you'll have so that's why you're going to need help with this stuff because no one tax is difficult to calculate, but when you add all them together, it becomes complex. And then you're gonna to have to pay the liabilities that you withheld, Social Security, Medicare, federal income tax on the employee and employer side to the government. Then you're also gonna to have to process payroll forms. Usually the government wants 941s, federal income tax, Social Security, Medicare forms, on a quarterly basis, four times a year. They want the 940, federal unemployment tax, FUTA tax, one time a year. They want the W-2s and the W-3s at the end of the year. And the W-2s you have to send out to the employees as well. You also have to make sure that you give the pay stubs each time you give a paycheck to employees 
reporting not only the net amount, not only the year to date gross amount minus the net amount, but the, the current paycheck as well as the year to date. Okay, so that becomes like a lot of information. That's why you have to pay for payroll, even if you only have a couple people most of the time. Remember, if you do that in QuickBooks, if I look at into its website, you can see you can you can go into their uh, payroll area. Uh, what happened? I go into my payroll area here and you can look at their pricing within the payroll. So typically, if you buy QuickBooks, there'll be an upsell option for payroll. You want to think through, uh, again, think it in depth. How do you want to deal with payroll? If you're a bookkeeper, what kind of clients do you want to set up? How do you want to deal with payroll for those clients? Do you want to pick up clients that don't have payroll? Do you want to pick up clients that have third-party payroll? Do you want to be some? Do you want to set up payroll within QuickBooks? What kind of support do you want to do if you're going to be taking on that task? Okay, so let's close uh, that out. And uh, so, so the forms here. Just remember the forms that we will create. This is the 941 that we got to do on a quarterly basis. Uh, this is the 940 that will be on a yearly basis. And these are the W3s. And this is a, a W2, or no, this is a W4 form. Now, when you just start a new employee, typically, if you're going to hire them as an employee, they're going to need the W4 information. That's what we need in order to set the information up basically into our system. This is because mainly for the federal income tax, the federal income tax becomes a problem because the, the our normal individual income tax system is really pretty complex. So we have to have a, a lot of information to properly withhold the federal income taxes from the employees. And that's what this does. But you might be able to do it basically electronically, allowing the employee possibly to set up their own information on their end, which would be great. So if you have payroll turned on, and we have in our sample file here, you might be able to test it out with a 30-day trial, or if you have a student uh, account or something, uh, it'd be nice to have the payroll that's that's the setup process. So if I go into the payroll, we've got the overview. Welcome to QuickBooks Payroll. Let's get acquainted. Just a few questions and you'll be on your way. Uh, I've heard that before. This is going to be um, okay. Let's add your team. So uh, we'll help you set up the basics of payroll so you can create paychecks and calculate taxes like a pro. So this would be the employees possibly being able to invite the employees to set up their information, hopefully with an email. We'll talk about that. Contractors, they still have under the payroll area. Contractors are not employees, but you still have to issue them a 1099. And you can read the tea leaves right now for the federal government that really would like to force the employer to like withhold for the contractors, it looks like as well. But we talked about 1099s a little bit before. So then we have the payroll tax center. Uh, where we can manage our payroll uh, tax information. We got the workers comp. So workers comp is another kind of insurance that you'd have to set up, protect your team and business with workers comp. Next insurance syncs to your payroll for automatic and accurate payments so you can stay compliant uh, while protecting your team. This is another thing that will typically change by location. QuickBooks getting better and better at being able to calculate those types of things that are applicable just to a certain region laws regulations taxes workers comp applicable to just a certain place because that you can put the laws within the system so that's nice go from quote to checkout in minutes get coverage that's affordable and fits your plan now also note that when you're when you're doing some of these type of things are kind of uh possibly like upsells for uh, QuickBooks or they're they're affiliating. I mean, you know, you're purchasing things from them, similar to when you have the checking. Uh, when if you have a, a QuickBooks checking account, for example, it's ease of use so that you can help get payments from clients, but you're also using you know their checking account system, so they're acting like a bank in that situation. So discover, and so then we have the benefits, similar kind of thing here. Benefits are great, uh, but. You, you want to manage, you also want to think about the cost of the benefits, right? So let's look what they have. Discover and manage employee benefits. Uh, attract and retain talent with benefits that fit your budget. Uh, exports can help you find the right plan and will automate payroll deductions to save you time. So it's great that the benefits like here could be integrated nicely if you, you know, go through the benefits 
within QuickBooks, but the question is also, what's the cost and what are the best benefits uh, and the providers that would give you the best benefits? So health insurance, take care of your team with, with Allstate Health Solutions. So now they're look, you're looking Allstate, right? So again, that might be fine, but you're also, you can also see that basically you, you'd want to find the best insurance plan, right? Not just the one that happens, the QuickBooks can sync most easily into the system. Maybe those two are the same, but just, you know, be aware of that. Affordable and flexible healthcare package will manage payroll deductions over 200 plus nationwide and local carriers. Find cost-effective insurance options for you and your team. Export support, just a call away. Compare plans. So apply for coverage, uh, supplemental coverage at no cost. So then you can search for the plan here. They've got the 401k plan. Now remember, these are things that oftentimes possibly larger uh, companies might do because the benefits are, are beneficial to both the employee and the employer because if you can pay your employees without them being subject to payroll tax, then you're giving them more bang for the buck. You're giving them more you're giving them the same amount of money but it goes further because they're not getting hit by the government for taxes that's often where the benefits come into play such as a 401k plan now note that most 401k plans can be somewhat complicated to manage so there's other options for small businesses possibly like a sep for example that you might you might look into for your employees so you want to think about these things these are optional things that again you want to put a good deal of thought in as to what would be your best options. So save time and automate payroll deductions when you open a 401k through our partner, so guidelines. So once again, you're working with our partner here. Uh, affordable prices up to 16,500 to uh, in tax credits, no transactions fees and no credits may cover setup and admin expenses, simple setup and management, smooth employee onboarding. Well, that sounds nice. Looking for different options, find health insurance pl plan through Simply Insured. So again, that might be a good research tool. Why business owners offer businesses, offer benefits through QuickBooks Online. You can further your research there. You've got the HR advisor, HR tools. Now payroll, when we think of it from a bookkeeping standpoint, we're usually thinking about the things that impact our financial statements, that, that being the taxes. But payroll is also intimately related to HR, human resources, because we're dealing with laws related to employees, which could become quite cumbersome. And those are things we want to be in compliance with, because unfortunately, the people that are most likely to sue you as a business owner are your employees, right? So you want to make you want to do everything you can to be in compliance uh, with your employees. So hire, onboard, and manage your team with reliable best practices, save time with templates. So you've got the hiring and onboarding. You can do some research here, uh, setting up policies, uh, following HR laws, manage contacts, managing contacts, and terminating. So this could be your kind of hub for the research. And then you've got the compliance, compliance news and information review the latest compliance information from federal and state agencies along with our year in contact to help your business navigate complex payroll topics so year in checklists then we've got some more research tools that you can take a look at hopefully by looking at all this you can see that this is why payroll is a complex system because of the hr laws with the tax laws if it wasn't for that then paying the employees would be easy. How would it work? You would shake hands with your employees, come up with an amount that you're going to pay them based on your work, and then you'd issue them a check just like you would with any other vendor, right? That would be it. Get out of the, get out of my way, government. That would be, that'd be over. But no, it's quite complex and it's going to get more complex likely because the technology is going to allow more information to be given to the government. Therefore, the government's going to want the employer to be acting as their information gatherer and money gatherer in the form of taxes. So it is what it is. That's where we're at. Let's do it. Overview. Let's get started. So have you paid employees in 2024? This helps us calculate your payroll taxes accurately. Answer yes. If you, your accountant, or maybe even a previous owner of your business had 
uh, employees. If you haven't paid employees in 2024, select no. Now, this is really important because if you had payroll prior to this, then it's a little bit more difficult and, and problematic uh, of a setup process, right? Because if you're starting from scratch, then you had no prior payroll that's going to muddy the waters. If you had a prior payroll system set up, ideally, then you would like to part ways with the prior payroll as of the end of the year, starting the, the new year as of January in the new system. You really, really would like to do that because the payroll has, the, has things in it that makes it a little bit problematic to have like one year on payroll with the prior system and another on, on the new system. Those things include caps. So the federal unemployment tax has a cap. Once, once the employees hit a certain point, they no longer pay taxes. Same with the social security. You also have to report not only the paycheck by paycheck information, but the year to date information. And when you process the 1040 and the, not, and the W-2s at the end of the year, you have to give the whole year's information and you, therefore you need all years information in one system. So if you're moving over in the middle of the year, meaning you already had payroll processed in the year that you're starting the new system in, generally you need to get the prior information into the system so that you can properly calculate not just the current paycheck, but the year to date paycheck and be able to calculate the year end information. Notice that payroll is also kind of a, an area where it doesn't hit the fan. The, st the stinky stuff doesn't hit the fan until the end of the year, oftentimes, when you're trying to reconcile everything with the year in forms, the 940, the W2s, and the W3s. And then you realize, oh, wait, something doesn't, something went wrong. And by then, it's a mess to fix. So you kind of want, it's one of those things you want to get it right the first time and not have to, not have to fix it. It's not a tinkering thing. In other words, it's the adage is measure twice, cut once, not tinker although tinkering's fun, good with other stuff. So in any case, I'm gonna say no after my rant. Uh, when, when is your first payday with QuickBooks? So if you need to run payroll soon, we'll make it happen. So I'm gonna say the per first payday is gonna be the, the end of January. So, cause I'm gonna say it's a monthly pay period for our example problem. So I'm gonna say next, notice this is an issue for practicing payroll in QuickBooks cause it has to run real time. That's why it's hard to practice payroll because you really would like to run a whole year's worth of payroll, but you can't really do it because you kind of have to run the payroll real time, right? So I'm going to go next. Uh, what's the primary work location? So I'm just going to keep it at our location here, which I set up 90210 Beverly Hills. I just made that up. It's like a million dollar uh, house if you're interested in purchasing that house. Uh, what's the primary work location? I'm going to say it's the same location here. So I'm going to say next. What's the what's your payroll contact? This helps us make uh, sure that sure that reminders and other important payroll info goes to the right spot. Okay, so we have our contact. This is our our contact information. I'm going to say next. And how have you run payroll? So run, so ADP is an external. So some of these are external payroll providers, spreadsheets. If you want to do it by hand, you're crazy to do that these days, but it's possible, but you probably, but I, I don't recommend it typically, even with a few people other, uh, I've never run payroll. We'll just say we're not, didn't do it. Let's go. Boom. This is for most likely internal purposes, probably not going to have an impact on your system because we already told them that we didn't process any payroll for the current year. So they're just gathering data on us. So add your first employee. So now we can start adding our employees. So let's go ahead and do that. So upload your report. If you had a report to upload done, add employees. Let's go ahead. I'm going to hit done for now because I think I can go back and add the employees next here. So now we have our overview. So now I'm in the payroll. And I can see here we have get ready for the pay. Here's our checklist. Payday is set up. Uh, we have your next payday on the calendar. Your business info is complete. Tell us about your team. Enter, enter each employee's info to get them ready. So that's gonna be the next bit we have to check off. Contact your bank, use same day direct deposit. Now note when I add the employees, I have the thing down here to start there. But I also, if I look at my employees tab, now it has basically changed. We don't have anything in there and we have the add 
uh, employees this way as well. So I think we'll basically go to the same. Let's go back here. Let's continue on and say d d add employees. So I'm going to add an employee and I'm just going to make up a name of Adam Hamilton, which I'm not sure if that's the way you spell it. Now, uh, we'll email them an invite to QuickBooks Workforce where they can view their uh, pay stubs, W-2s, and more. That would be great. Uh, the higher, but I'm not going to do that because so if we if you can email them, that would be that would be great. I'm going to do this as of January 2024. I'm going to put a generic email of test test h dot gmail dot com or at gmail dot com. That's how emails work, isn't it? At email. Okay. Uh, would you also like your employee to self set up in workforce? So they'll enter their personal tax and banking information. This is recommended. Now that would be great. Generally, that's what you would generally want to do. Give them the email, let them set up their own information instead of having to get the W-4 from them and setting it up. But we're going to set it up ourselves. So I'm going to not do that this time. Of course, that would be the recommended easier thing to do. Also possibly lessening your liability because you're not the one doing the data input. They're doing the data input, which would be nice. But we're going to continue here. And uh, let's try that again. So we're going to continue. And so now we have to set up their information. So we have the profile. We've got the documents and the notes. So each of these have a little yellow thing. We need some information within it. We have the edit on the right. And then again, we have up top the time tracking. If we want to send them an invitation for time tracking, uh, if, if we were using that to do their payroll or possibly also for the, uh, the invoicing pay and tax documents, we could send a reminder and employee self setup if we still want to do that. But we're going to continue here. I'm going to go into it and edit it. So we've got Adam Hamilton, phone number 959, work number. We're going to not have one mobile. I'll leave it blank. Employee self setup. Turn this on if you want this employee to enter their personal tax and banking information. Would be nice, but no, we're not going to do that. We're going to say that they live in 90210 Beverly Hills as well. So this is a $126 million house if you're on the market. Uh, 9505 Gloaming Drive, Beverly Hills, California, 90210. And we're going to say the date of birth is, let's say, uh, let's just say January de 19. Let's just bring this down to 2008, let's say. And well, let's do that again. <laughs> let's, 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 let's go 1993, let's say. And we're going to say that mail and social security dot, 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 and dot, 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 confirm social security. Boom. It won't let me do that. So social security, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine let's try it again and then confirmed okay save it so what you entered okay that's fine all right the yellow thing has disappeared good so then we've got uh the Adams job specific. So active, we're going to say active versus paid leave, unpaid leave, and so on. Hire date 1124. Pay date, uh, add pay schedule. So we're going to say the pay schedule is uh, pay schedule name. Let's see what happens. I'm going to hit the drop down up top and say every month. So here it is every week, every other week. Uh, which is mid month twice or or every other week. I'm sorry twice a month would be mid month I'm gonna do every month. Okay, so the next one's on the 31st 31st every month Okay, use this pay schedule for employees you add after this 
Typically, that would be the case. Here's the schedule we have showing a pay at the end of each month. Save it. Okay. And do -do -do -do. so we have that. And then we have the manager, if we want to put that department, if we needed that job title, employee ID, if we had one, workers comp class. I'm just going to save that as is in our generic problem here. So then we got the payment method. Let's start that one. So paycheck direct deposit. If it was a direct deposit, you'd have to set up your direct deposit, which would often be the case these days, but we're going to keep it as a paycheck so that we can process it kind of manually within our system. And then the pay types. Let's edit that. So set up a uh, payroll type. So we're going to say, how much does he get paid? So the normal pays are going to be either hourly, salary, salary or commission. I'm going to say salary and then pay per year. You can put the salary per month or per week. I'm just going to put it in here per year, 55,000, we're going to say. So that means if they get paid every month, 55,000 divided by 12 would be a 4,583 and 33 cents. Okay, and so then I'm gonna go, then I'm gonna go, boom. So set up working hours day. So we'll use this to calculate time off related to items like unpaid time, sick time, uh, vacation time for this employee. So they're gonna say eight hours uh, a day and, the, and uh, days per week, we'll keep it there at five. Common pay types, so overtime pay, so first day of the week. So then if you have to deal with overtime pay, obvious, oftentimes there's a different rate uh, for overtime. I'm not going to get into all the gener generalities in our generic problem here. We have a whole other section or course on that if you want to check it out. But double overtime, holiday pay, bonus pay, commissions, you can add others. Time off pay policies, no pay time off. Uh, you can select add uh, new pay time off policy. That's another whole issue for with regards to time off that could be part of your, your employee package. Unpaid time off. I'm just going to keep it with no to keep it simple here. No sick pay policy, add a sick pay policy and vacation pay. So you have some leeway in terms of how you would want to treat these types of policies as your, you know, part of your employee benefit package. You can manage those here. Additional pay types. So allowance, uh, reimbursements, cash tips, uh, paychecks, clergy house, and so on and so forth. If these items uh, be applicable, we won't go into them in detail here because again, we have another course or section on that. We're going to keep it as is. Let's go ahead and save it. So there we have that. And to do, so we pay types, deductions, include paycheck deductions. So did I go into here? What deductions, con contributions, and garnishments does have? Uh, deductions and contributions. We're not, we're, uh, these may include health insurance, retirement plans, loan, and so on. We, we're going to say there are none here because we're going to keep it simple. Garnishments. A garnishment is a court order to withhold wages. We're going to imagine there are no garnishments. So emergency contact information here as well. So let's go ahead and say done. Let's actually go in there one more time. If I go back in one more time and I scroll down because I think we didn't do the tax withholding. So if I edit that one, this is important uh, form W-4 changes made in 2020. The IRS made significant changes to the W-4. So we're not using the 2019, but the 2020 W-4. That's going to be something like this. And so we're going to say filing status, singled or married filing separate versus married filing jointly. You can find this on the W-4 or possibly have them fill it out themselves if you gave them the W-2. Select uh, if, uh, sec yes, if Adam marked this box on the W-4. I'll just keep it as is. Claim dependents. I'm not going to add any dependents. Other adjustments are down below. And then you've got the state withholdings. So you can find the information for this section in Adam's state, ta Adam state tax form. And then we have the tax exemptions. These are not common. Certain government uh, criteria must be met. So in other words, are they exempt from federal unemployment tax, Social Security and Medicare, California, SUI, ETT, and SDI? Typically, you would not be exempt and you'd have to be paying those taxes. 
Okay, so that's just our general overview. I'm gonna say save on that one. So one more here, let's go and add another one. I'll do this quickly. It's gonna be Erica Smith. And let's add the email here this time. And then I'm gonna say, as of the beginning of the year again, I'm not gonna do the self-employee setup, although that would be great in practice. And so we're gonna say next. And there's our setup on the profile. Let's just go through here quickly. We're gonna say name, duh, 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 email, phone, duh, 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 uh, 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 and then, and then duh, 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 duh. worker, phone, no self-employee setup. She also lives in 90210. This is a $47 million house. It's gonna be, if you're in the market, going to be 39 Beverly Park CIR Beverly Hills California 90210 date of birth let's say uh, what, am, what am I 2024 minus like 35 let's say 1989 we'll say dude but then 19, hold on, 1989, gender, female, and then we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm gonna say this is gonna be six, four, four, five, 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 seven, eight, nine. This is going to be same six, four, four, five, 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 seven, eight, nine, and then save it. And there's that one employee detail. If we go into that, we say active monthly. We don't need any job stuff. So that's good. And then tax withholdings. So we're going to keep it so we'll just keep it as is single. This is what would come from the W-4 like we saw before. So we'll just keep it at that for our generic problem. Uh, payment method, we're gonna say is a paper check instead of direct deposit, which is what you might do oftentimes. And uh, pay types. So we're gonna say hourly this time to keep it something different. And we'll say that she gets paid $16 an hour. Uh, uh, and then set workers hours per day, hours per week, let's say eight and 40, enter the number greater or equal to one. Oh, this is days per week. Let's say five days a week. Uh, show active, show all. So hourly two common pay types. We'll just keep this all the same. And we're not gonna go into that stuff. We saw it before, so I'll save that. And then deductions and contributions, same thing. I won't go into that in detail. We're gonna keep it as a simple generic problem. We have another whole nother course or section if you wanna dive into the payroll more, more in and of itself. So we're gonna say done. So you're, you're, already, you're ready to pay your team. So we have enough info for you to pay your team if you're running low on time. So I'm not gonna pay team, I'm gonna continue. And then now we have the overview here it says pay your team. Uh, would you like, okay, let's close that. Pay your team. So you got the pay team here. We've got our setup. The only thing we're missing is connecting to the bank if we wanted to direct deposits. And then uh, let's set up your taxes into your tax information. Have your state and federal tax ID. Let's go into that one. So it says, tell us your general business information. Let's make dealing with payroll taxes a snap. Tell us about your business so we can report payroll wages and taxes. So we've got the company name, ad address, okay. Uh, okay, tell us, da -da, that's fine. Give us your federal tax information. So well, this is gonna be nine, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, which payroll tax form do you file with? We're gonna say that we file the form 941, which is a quarterly form. How often do you pay your taxes? We're gonna say monthly. Uh, we pay the taxes monthly. So we recommend semi-weekly. We're gonna say, okay, so boom. 
And then it says, let's add your California tax information. So withholding one, two, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Monthly, how often do you pay? Unemployment insurance, if you're in the California, do you know your unemployment? I'm gonna say no, keep the default. Employee training tax, let's keep that as is. If they let me know, they're gonna force me. Let's keep it at zero, boom. And then, so there is that. Connect your bank, no. And then take care of your team, add workers comp. I'm not gonna deal with that. We're not gonna add 401k plan. Check out employee health plans. No, I'm good on that. So set up process, check out all your help videos and list documents to have on hand. Let us handle your taxes, so on. You have some videos you can check out in the employees tab. Now we have our employees where we can run payroll from this screen. Workers' comp insurance is required. So if you're in California, you would need to set up the workers' comp. It will be dependent upon state information. Then we've got the employee lookup if you needed that. Active employees versus inactive or all employees. Add payroll items. Invite, uh, invite uh, to workforce. So you can add a new employee. Add an employee. You've got your cog drop down to show the email and phone if you wanted to as the columns up top and then uh, paycheck list up top and then of course you can go into your payroll people here you could put it in privacy mode which will remove the rates over here and not show the obviously the pay information as well contractors again that's not really the payroll we didn't set anything up there because contractors are not employees that's the point uh, payroll tax information Payroll Tax Center, update your settings. To add tax payments, you need to update your account information in uh, payroll settings. So within the settings, if I jump there, it says uh, we're gonna automat automate taxes and forms. We'll automatically pay and file your federal, state uh, payroll taxes beginning with the next period, okay? So if I go to the workers comp, if we had workers comp on, it would be here. We didn't add any benefits. And these two are basically the resources. All right, so payroll, that's the general kind of process for uh, setting up the payroll. We're, we're not going to go into depth when we go through the practice problem to run the payroll, but just to give you a flavor of, of the setting up of the payroll here and to give some idea of the, you know, the complexity around it and, and some thought in terms of how you would want to manage your payroll, remembering that you do have options to do it internally this way or by hiring an external payroll provider if you so choose and so on.